Here's the existing garage at our facility. And it's a 10 foot ceiling, which isn't bad. You could probably lift this S5 up pretty easily with this much room. You could modify this garage door to make it a side mount so this track wasn't dead center right here so you could lift up into this space. But that's not what we're gonna do. We have a different idea. Um, I'm, I'm a mechanical engineer, I'm a professional engineer, so I usually see things a little bit differently. I usually have a really different opinion than most people. Um, and this is an example of that. So we're probably gonna use this stall here and we're gonna take out that center track obviously, but we're also probably gonna do a roll up door over here instead of this uh, traditional garage door that has these tracks running all the way across. And it's still only 10 feet of vertical, so we want to get some more vertical because we're probably going to be lifting this bad boy and doing some work to it. So even if we, we remove that center track and lifted this car up all the way, we still wouldn't have that much uh, height underneath the car. Um, so yeah, we want to get a little bit more room out of here. So how would we do that? This is a traditional truss style. Um, it just has that horizontal member on the bottom and some triangles uh, connecting it to those top cords up there. And I took the strength of these trusses with the maximum snow and wind load in the area. And I, I determined how strong the current trusses are, what the safety factor is. And then I redesigned the trusses as a scissor truss, which I'll show in a little bit. And here's the new design in the background, you can see it. That's what we're gonna do. We're gonna make these two big lower uh, cords and cross them over on two by sixes and end up, we're gonna remove the lower part of the truss down here. And we can't just replace every one of these trusses with that design because it wouldn't be strong enough still. So what we have to do is we have to A, modify these existing trusses right over this bay, what will be our future bay. We have to modify just the existing trusses. And then we're gonna be adding a new, completely new scissors truss in between each of the existing trusses. And that will give us the strength we need to replace and modify the existing trusses to give us um, at the very peak. So you can see uh, right there, the very peak we have right here, an extra three feet of room. So that gives us um, 13 feet of liftable space at the very center, which is all we need because the, the rails of the, uh, the lift go to 12 and a half feet. So we'll be able to lift a car pretty high. We did a test with the Forerunner and we lifted it up and you can literally walk around or we, you know, we, we acted like we were gonna lift it up and you can literally walk around underneath the forerunner or where the forerunner will be. So that will be totally adequate space for us and we're super excited to get this project finished up. So doing this design work for the trusses was no easy task. So I started off with a couple different ideas. Um, I started off with actually like, you know, the traditional truss style. So I wanted to calculate the strength in the existing trusses. And I went through iteration after iteration after iteration of different ideas. I, I calculated metal trusses. I calculated different cross-sectional areas of wood, different configurations. And then I ended up at the final design right here. And it's just, it's uh, nights of just trigonometry and uh, strength calculations in the trusses. This is just some of the CAD work I did on the trusses. So we had to make sure the lift fit, obviously. We, we made mock cars and we fitted the cars inside the stall. We put a little forerunner in here and uh, we lifted it up and made sure we had the clearance necessary. So here are just some of the drawings that I used. Um, we calculated every single dimension, every single angle. We calculated the strength in literally every piece of wood, every connection. I literally know exactly when every fastener we use will break. So we decided to go with a 3 8 inch grade eight uh, steel bolt and a lock nut for the, um, the fasteners. 
and we're using an extremely specific number of fasteners per joint based on what sort of stress levels those joints or that particular joint will see. So here's a forerunner lifted up in the garage space based on the CAD. We have over six feet, seven inches of room underneath a Toyota forerunner, which is just awesome. And this is a cartoon version of the forerunner, so we'll probably have even more room than that. This is another car that I was uh, testing out the dimensions of inside the bay, and that that's a secret for a later time. That's a secret bill that will be coming up, so gotta stay tuned. Additionally, I was able to take all my calculations from the trig I did, and I was able to calculate literally every part of the structure to find out exactly when our new trusses would fail and under what conditions, and this is the result of those calculations. So I, I made a model to model the new truss and made sure that our safety factor is just as good now as it was in the original design. So here's our new safety factor with all the, the new um, pieces of wood, geometries put in, our safety factor is nine. That means once we're all done, we're gonna have a, a strength of nine times more than we need. Today we're going to begin the process of replacing our existing trusses with a new scissor truss design that's going to get us some much needed headroom to accommodate a lift in this bay of the garage with a vehicle on top. We're going to bring you along for the process and go over some of the different materials we're using, the design and the equipment necessary to do this. We were originally going to show all the tools and techniques we used to do this job, but we decided not to because there's a lot of engineering involved and it was really specific to this job. So if you have any questions, just let us know. We'll be happy to answer them for you. Thanks.
testing the strength of the truss. How does it feel? Pretty rigid? Ah, oh, good. Minimal movement. Oh, yeah. Still, still good? Yeah. I All think right. So. All right. You probably climb across them. Why don't you do that? That's all we could. It's pretty solid. Oh, yeah. Just like that. Dude, very solid. <laughs> <laughs> As you can see, we basically just straddled the existing trusses with the new design, the new trusses, and then we slowly cut out pieces of the old trusses one by one, which was a pretty safe way of doing it. We then filled in the open spaces with the new trusses, and this was pretty safe now because it's the middle of summer, so there's no snow load. Safety third, or, or safety in threes. The first third, protect your eyes. The second third, six, is protect your ears. And three thirds is nine, protect your hands. Here is the completed truss system. So you, as you can see, there's enough room to easily lift the Forerunner up. It's just a huge open space. We measured it, so yeah, once this thing is lifted, we'll easily be able to walk underneath the Forerunner. We ended up obviously doubling all the trusses. We still haven't attached some of the support uh, metal pieces, the plates, onto the ends of the trusses yet. That's one of our next steps. And the whole installation went really well. So we were able to just cut the existing trusses out and replace them one by one. And the whole operation went very smoothly. 13 feet of vertical right at the center line. And our next steps are to uh, A, replace this door right here. So we're getting a roll up door. So these tracks that you see right here are not going to be here and the whole mechanism to roll the door up is going to be localized right here 
and the door will match. It'll be the same color, and it's just an insulated roll-up door. So that's getting manufactured right now, and it's on its way. And then the next step is getting the actual lift in here. And we did a test on the concrete. We measured it. It's four and a quarter thick, which is the thickness that is specified by Benpack for the lift that we're looking into. So that's good. We don't have to modify the concrete or the footings and we'll have easily enough room to fit the lift in. One more thing that we're considering right now is putting a gusset made out of plywood on the back wall and then on this truss up here, this existing truss, so on the side. And we're gonna make probably a, a plywood gusset. So it's just basically covering the entire truss with plywood, uh, double thick. And then we might run a I-beam across this section right here and we would be doing that because we could use it as a hoist. So we could attach like a trolley or a hoist to it so we could pick up engines and stuff from, uh, from inside the bay. So this is the height of the car right now, uh, not including the tires. And we can just take the farthest point back where the car is sitting right now and measure where it will be once we lift the car. That's a lot of room. <laughs> So we'll have a lot of space in here, a lot of lifting room.